back to today's podcast. In this episode today, we're going to talk about the deadlift, but we're going to talk about the true benefits of actually doing the deadlift. I think most people I know uh, know it's a great exercise for uh, full body strength and power. It's good for developing your hamstring glutes, but we're going to talk about the true function of actually mastering a proper deadlift in today's podcast. We'll also go over um, a bit of a myth that deadlifts can be bad for your back. And some people swear and say it's the worst exercise you can do and never do deadlifts uh, for your back because it's gonna wreck it. And you've got some people like me saying it's the best exercise you can do for your back if done correctly. So I'll kind of address that in a little more detail in the middle of the podcast. And at the end of the episode today, we'll talk about what you need from a mobility standpoint to get yourself in a good position to do a deadlift. Because if we don't have the proper mobility requirements, then yes, it absolutely could potentially be bad for your back. So we'll start with the three main benefits. We'll talk about um, is it bad for your back or not. I'll give you my opinion on it. And we'll kind of break down the mobility checkpoints at the end of the episode. So let's dive into benefit number one right now. And benefit number one, I think this is by far the most important, and that is the deadlift teaches the individual how to flex and extend through the hips. Let's talk about quickly what hip flexion extension is before I kind of jump into it more. Hip flexion, think about pushing your hips back. So when you're doing a deadlift, your spine stays stable, you're pushing your hips back, and then when you come back up, you're extending your hips with your glutes. And a lot of people don't know how to flex and extend through their hips. There might be a little bit of hip flexion, there might be a little bit of hip extension, but a lot of those segments kind of come from the spine. And that's something called relative stiffness, where we kind of move at our most flexible area. And for a lot of people, that's gonna be easier to just kind of bend the spine, so kind of round the back, and then extend the back coming up. That's a big problem. And the deadlift can really teach an individual to move through our hips via hip flexion, so we push hips back on the way down, and then at the, when we come back up, via hip extension. And that can be an absolute game changer for protecting your lower back, not only for the weight room, but just even performing functional everyday tasks. Because um, the deadlift, the hip hinge pattern, is a very functional task in my opinion. And every single person should know how to deadlift, because, um, or hip hinge to say, because during the house, whether like a couch or lifting something up, we want to get into that proper hip hinge uh, pattern. And again, if we don't want to flex and extend through our hips, we're going to do a flex and extend through our spine, and that causes a lot of microtrauma and uh, breakdown in the process. So a good way to really teach the individual the deadlift and how to flex and extend through the hip, um, grab like a, some sort of broomstick without kind of the top mop part on it, put it on your head, mid-back, and basically a, a bone called the sacrum, so right between your butt. Feet don't hip width apart. You try to maintain those three points of contact as you push hips back, and you extend back up. And if it kind of pops off at the bottom, if, uh, let's say the broomstick pops off the lower back, it probably means you're flexing too much at the lower back. And that actually happens quite often when we actually do a deadlift. And usually the reason for that is we're either not flexing properly the hips or we're going too low. Or if we go too low and we go past our active range of motion, then of course our lower back is going to have to round and tuck under to really compensate for the movement. So that's benefit number one. I can go on for days about this or for hours about this, but uh, it teaches the individual how to flex and extend the hips rather than flexing and extending through the spine. Absolute game changer if you can learn and master and then load the hip hinge pattern. Benefit number two, it teaches the individual how to create stiffness around the spine. So this is why I love the deadlift as well. If we're performing any sort of heavy deadlift, you're gonna to have to create some good stiffness in the spine. It's gonna, you're just not gonna be able to lift um, a decent amount of weight if you're not creating 360 degrees of good overall uh, core stiffness. And what I mean core, I mean like every kind of muscles that kind of um, go across the spine, protect the spine, even around the hip. So the deadlift, it teaches that person to create good stiffness while doing the motion. And that's super important as well because that can help protect the spine, of course. To give you an analogy, Think of the spine as like a fishing rod. So let's say we're in our boat, we, uh, we throw the fishing rod into the water, um, but we want to anchor it down. So we want to get good stability for the rod. And we're going to like, attach some wires to kind of anchor it down the boat, especially if we're like something heavy. And that's going to make it a lot more stable to kind of pull the big fish in. We kind of have 
those uh, rods to the side on the left and right sides of the fishing rod, kind of anchoring it down. And the same thing like a deadlift. If we have a good 360 degrees of stiffness around the spine, so remember the fishing rod is a spine's example, then that's going to create a lot more stiffness, a lot more stability, and that can really help prevent uh, lower back pain. On the other end, let's say if we don't have those wires or those uh, rods kind of attached to the fishing rod for more stability, what's going to happen when you pull something too heavy? So the rod's going to flex, right? It's going to bend. Exact same thing with the deadlift. If we don't have good stiffness around the core, when we try to pick up the heavy weight, our back's just going to flex, and then yes, that can obviously cause a lower back injury. But that's what the deadlift. Um, it's fantastic for um, improving your muscle strength uh, and stability, uh, those muscles around the spine, which can be, again, an absolute game changer for, uh, for preventing lower back injuries, especially if the individual has a lot of motion in their lower back and we're very hypermobile there, so lots of mobility. If we create more stiffness there, um, just another fantastic tool to really protect your lower back. Benefit number three. So we'll kind of get into the, the topic, which I think most people think the deadlift um, is great for, and that is it's a great full body exercise um, that really kind of hammers the, uh, the glutes and the hamstrings. So the glutes, besides aesthetics, I get it. Everyone wants good aesthetics. And when, when we talk deadlifts, that's kind of um, one of its main benefits is really glute aesthetics. But um, having good, proper, functioning glutes goes so much more than just aesthetics. So think of the glutes are the powerhouse of your body. And if we don't have good glute function, we can get so many issues in our body. It, we can have knee issues, we can have ankle issues, we can have hip issues, we can have lower back injuries, uh, issues. The list goes on and on. And uh, the deadlift, again, is just a fantastic way to um, hit the hamstrings and the glutes and really kind of help protect joints above and below the hip. So of course, everyone wants aesthetics. If you guys are just pure aesthetics here and that's all you care about for this podcast, uh, you should absolutely deadlift. And of course, there are gonna be a few different variations in terms of what muscles you can hit. So for example, if I'm going more straight knee, that's gonna be a little more hamstring engagement. If I'm, you know, a little more of a vertical shin angle with a slight uh, knee bend, then we can kind of bias it a little bit more towards the glutes, uh, glutes via hip flexion opposed to really kind of locking out the knees when we kind of go down. And we're talking traditional deadlift, where bar bit, uh, I should say, lifting it from the ground. That's just kind of like a full body exercise. It's gonna get the quads, uh, hamstrings, glutes, basically all the working muscles um, you really think of, really. So it's a great full body exercise. So the deadlift, great for glute aesthetics, but remember, having um, good glute function, or say, I just said the glutes, is way more than having aesthetics as it serves for having great function for our lower body, all the way up to our upper body, as it's really the powerhouse of our uh, full body kinetic chain movements. So that's benefit number three. Let's talk about the myth right now. So I, I, I shouldn't even call it a myth, it's a matter of opinion, I guess you could say, although I strongly disagree for anyone saying it is bad for back. But he'll be my, here's my response when people say deadlifting is bad for back. Well, basically I want you to remember all the things I basically just spat out you. Remember, it teaches the individual how to flex and extend the hips, which is super important um, because we don't want to flex and extend the spine, of course. Number two, it teaches the individual how to create stiffness around the spine. And based on 360 degrees of good support, which is obviously very important, think of the spinal, excuse me, think of the fishing rod example where you kind of put the rod in the water, you grab something heavy, you hook it on, and the spine, or as you said, the rod can't tolerate it, and it flexes or just bends too much. Same thing with the deadlift. We're gonna create good stiffness around the spine if we know how to master uh, the movements and load it as well. And number three, like I said, I just talked about the glutes and how many um, function actually has in the body opposed to just aesthetics. So that would be my argument to say why the deadlift is one of the best exercises you can do for your back. And now I'll kind of talk about the other end though, and I get why people say that it is a bad exercise for your back, even though I strongly disagree with it. It definitely is a high risk exercise, especially if you had a previous back injury that, that kind of went untreated. So let's even a, a back injury. Um, you didn't really go to Cairo or physio, or maybe you did, but they didn't really kind of address the problem too well. And then you start deadlifting heavy again. If the mechanism of your injury is kind of compression and even flexion, so your back rounding, then yeah, the deadlift can potentially cause issues for your lower back. But this is again assuming kind of that we're not executing the movement properly or we're doing too much load and which we can handle. So 
the deadlift, but we can master the movement and really simplify it in terms of learning the hip pinch pattern first, uh, maybe doing add some weight from there just slowly, and then just really kind of build up from that position. Then I'll go back to my previous argument where I think it's the best exercise you can do for your lower back. So what everyone says is bad for your back, uh, I wouldn't listen to them too much. Again, can it be bad? Yeah, like any exercise, if you execute the movement incorrectly, if you load it too much, if you're not really, you know, maybe periodizing it too well in your training. For example, like if you do heavy deadlifts Monday, you're probably not gonna wanna do heavy deadlifts uh, Wednesday or Thursday, as it's a pretty systemically fatiguing exercise, so you want a little bit of time to recover. But if you kind of program correctly, you master the movement correctly, and you just um, have the necessary overload, you're not jumping from zero to 100 in terms of weight, then it's my opinion one of the best things you can actually do. Okay, let's talk about what do you need to actually get into a deadlift position. So we kind of went over uh, the benefits and the myth, but the deadlifts, or excuse me, the mobility here, kind of goes hand in hand in which I just talked about, and it could be bad for your back if you kind of get yourself into a bad position. So let's talk about a few things you need to get yourself into a good deadlift position. Number one, a good toe touch pattern is fantastic. So I would highly recommend just checking out you can Google YouTube, Great Cook, uh, Toe Touch Pattern. And it's uh, basically just um, pretty straightforward. You're staying straight, knees are locked, and you basically just try to get your feet are together. You basically just try to touch your feet or as close as you can, and you come um, all the way back up. It's not to say you need full hands to toes uh, touch, but you want to make sure, again, you kind of get a lot of hip flexion. So you're flexing the hip, and you're not just hyper mobile in your spine. And you want to make sure you have a respectful length because uh, let's say you come up a lot short and you can barely get past your knees. Do you think individuals going to be ready for a deadlift and they're, do you think they're going to be ready to uh, lift the bar from the ground or even like a Romanian deadlift? Uh, probably not, right? So if you don't have a proper toe touch pattern, that's something you definitely want to address before doing a deadlift because um, I, can, I, can really you know, I can really teach you how to do a deadlift, I can really show you the movements. But if you don't have the proper mobility and the requirements, it's just not going to happen. So anything you can really mobilize your hamstrings, really kind of teach you more that hip flexion versus the spinal flexion, that'd be a great start in terms of mastering that toe touch pattern and then mastering that hip pinch pattern. Number two, uh, the anatomy. So believe it or not, uh, some people are going to be at a disadvantage due to their anatomy. So let's say if you have super long legs, and it's kind of like medium arms, like they're not really super long, but we're really long legs, we're a tall person, and we don't really have long arms, you're, that's going to be at a pretty big disadvantage when doing a deadlift, especially if we're talking pulling a deadlift uh, from the floor. Reason being, we're going to need more hip flexion, of course, um, and need a little more thoracic extension if we're going to grab the bar from the ground. And if we don't have that good hip flexion, I hope you guys are kind of following along here, we're gonna have to round a bit more that spine, right? So kind of that principle, if we can't flex the hips, we gotta flex the spine. And that's the same concept. We can't get down low enough because our legs are uh, pretty tall, which called long femurs. Um, then it's just gonna put ourselves in a bad position and we have a more tendency to round over during the lift. So your anatomy can absolutely play a factor and no, you cannot change your anatomy. What you can do is maybe deadlift from a couple inches off the ground. So for example, opposed to deadlifting on the ground, maybe put on a couple bumper plates, put it up maybe two to four inches or so, deadlift from there, and it'll give you a lot more of a safer position to pull from. Number three, you need a little bit of ankle mobility, not too much. So in that setup, of course, in a deadlift, your knees are gonna be over your toes or over your ankles at least a little bit, over your foot, I should say, my apologies. And if you don't have that proper ankle mobility, again, we're gonna have to probably round the lower back, Maybe your knees are going to have to like, do some sort of funky thing to get into position. But still a little bit of ankle mobility you need to get yourself into a deadlift position. You don't need a ton, but you need a certain amount to execute it properly. Because if you don't have it, chances are you're going to round over at the spine. And that could cause you to round over even through your mid-back. And uh, the last one, I kind of talked about hip flexion, the toe touch pattern. Kind of goes hand in hand, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about that again. The last one is even thoracic spine mobility. So if the rest is fine, kind of think your mid-back, if we're really rounded over, so our shoulders kind of dump forward, we're really um, kyphotic, so kind of think of like the, 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 the hunchback in Notre Dame, and uh, you know, think of that person doing that delt position, him trying to grab the bar, it's not gonna look too good, right? And so if we're really kind of rounded over, let's say we sit a lot during the day, 
and our shoulders in what's called an entry rotate position. So we just can't really extend through our mid back. Um, that's going to leave us in a bit of a compromised position when actually doing a deadlift because uh, mid back's in a round, lower back by a round, and that can even cause, uh, of course, lower back injuries, but even some sort of shoulder injuries in the process as well because we're just in a bad position and we kind of pull the bar upright. So you got to be a little bit aware of that. So thoracic spine mobility, essentially means like mid-back mobility. You can feel free to Google that, thoracic spine extension, and they give some fantastic exercise to really kind of help improve that pattern. So that's it for today's episode. Uh, we'll do a quick recap here before we kind of uh, shut it down. So again, three main benefits of the deadlift. It's going to teach the individual how to flex and extend through the hips rather than the spine. Number two, it's going to teach the individual how to create a lot of stiffness around the spine. Take that fish run example. And number three, great full body exercise. If you're listening to this podcast just because you want big glutes or hamstrings, uh, it's fantastic for growing the glutes and hamstrings. And um, But even more important than that, remember glutes have a lot of functions and it can really help prevent injuries from your ankle, ankle all the way even up to your lower back. And if I meant, again, I give my viewpoint on it. I think it's one of the best exercises you can do to help protect your lower back. Some people may say the opposite, but if you do it correctly, you program it correctly, I would say not learn, master, and then load the hip hinge pattern into one of the best things you can do. In terms of uh, what you need to get in terms of, uh, what you need, sorry, to get yourself into a delicate position, you're gonna master the toe touch pattern. So you can feel free to Google great cook with that one. Um, anatomy, you can't really change your anatomy, but again, if you have kind of long legs, maybe deadlift from a few blocks to give yourself uh, a little less, um, a little less room of motion overall the pole. That one makes it a little bit easier for you. Number three, you're gonna need a little bit of ankle mobility, not a ton, but a little bit. And the last one, you're gonna need some thoracic spine mobility. Because again, if we're really rounded over, it's gonna be pretty tough to get ourselves into a good position uh, functionally. So that's it for today's podcast. I hope everyone enjoyed it, and I hope everyone kind of knows now the true benefits of the deadlift, and it's much uh, more than just a hamstring and glutes exercise. But if you do have any questions at all, please let me know, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks for listening, and have yourself a great day.